So today, I want to talk about what happened last week. Last Wednesday, a day that we will all remember for the rest of our lives. Of course, I'm talking about the Epiphany. The Twelfth Nighter, as we know it here in New Orleans, King Cake Day. That's the day that everyone puts out their trees on the street. And if you don't do it, please make sure you put it on this neutral ground so it gets picked up and put into uh, saving the, our uh, wetlands. But while I was walking down the street looking at all the trees, it reminded me of my family's tradition. Some people have stars on the top of their trees, some people put a bow. My family always puts an angel. And the reason was about 30 years ago, my cousin got up and told this story at Christmas. I got 22 first cousins. They're all sitting around, he's about 15. He's now a pediatric anesthesiologist. But he told this joke, and this is the reason why everyone in my family has an angel on top of their Christmas tree. So Santa Claus comes out one day, he's getting ready to get on his sled, and it's been an exceptionally, everyone's been exceptionally good that year. And everything's piled up on his sled, and he looks to Jesus fucking Christ, it's gonna be a long fucking night. And just as he's about to get on his sled, an angel comes running out, and he goes, Santa! Santa, you forgot this Christmas tree. Where do you want me to stick it? And Santa told him where to stick it, and there's been an angel on top of the Christmas tree ever since. <laughs> now, like I say, I got, I got a lot of cousins, and most of them are doctors and lawyers, very white privileged family, except for my cousins who are Cuban or Indian. And <laughs> when you walk in everyone's house during Christmas, Everyone looks around. First thing you do is say, oh man, it looks beautiful. And without a doubt, everyone's gonna look at that tree and be nice angel on the tree. <laughs> everyone's got an angel. No one's got a star, no one's got a bow. <coughs> now, my family, most of them live out near Baton Rouge. So it's a lot of, a lot of, uh, Southern bells in my family. Talk like this. They try to be prim and proper and do things. To be uh, to be polite. And it reminded me of a story, especially it reminded me of a couple weeks ago we were doing a, uh, a show at Agent Cajun for their anniversary. It reminded me of this story. There's two uh, Southern bells sitting around talking about their weddings and their anniversary. And one of them's been married for three years, and one of them's been married for one year. One has been married for one year, turns to one has been married for three years. Says, Honey, you've been married for three years. What did your husband get you for your first wedding anniversary? She said, you see this 10 karat diamond ring? She said, yes, that is what my husband got me for my first wedding anniversary. Her friend said, how nice. She said, well, what did your husband get you for your second wedding anniversary? She said, you see this full length mink coat? I said, yes. I said, that is what my husband got me for my second wedding anniversary. I said, how nice. I said, well, what about your third wedding anniversary? I said, it was a trip around the world lasted six months. I said, how nice. I said, well, honey, you've been married for a year. What did your husband get you for your first wedding anniversary? He said, etiquette lessons. She said, etiquette lessons? Whatever did you learn in etiquette lessons? They taught me how to say how nice and say, fuck you. <laughs> Another Southern Bell story, just to keep going with the flow. Uh, <laughs> so, Southern Bell from somewhere around Baton Rouge went to New Orleans, had a good time, came back, was talking to all the friends. It says, uh, She's telling them about what's going on in New Orleans. She said, did you know that in New Orleans they have men that date other men? All her friends said, no. She said, yes. She said, what do they call them? She said, they call them gays. She said, did you know that in New Orleans they have women that date other women? All her friends said, no. She said, yes. She said, what do they call them? She said, they call them lesbians. She said, did you know that in New Orleans they have men that put their mouths on women's private parts. 
All her friends said, no. She said, yes. She said, what did they call him? She said, well, I don't know, but when he was done, I called him wonderful. <laughs> she a little time. Huh? One more. All right. Uh, all right. I'll tell a quick Boudreau joke. Anyone here like Boudreau jokes? We got any, any Boudreau people? Cajuns? Family's been here about 250 years. Came over with the Acadians. This is one of my favorite ones in this quick. So Boudreaux and Thibodeau, they're best good friends. They've been best good friends since they was knee-high to neutral. And one day, Boudreaux come by to see his best good friend. You know, when you're that good friend, you don't knock on the door, you just walk in like you own the place. They walk in, and there you see, he sees Femari in bed with Boudreaux, I mean with Thibodeau. And they come and say, Marie, I can't believe you've done this to me. I love you. We've been together forever. I said, David, you and I have been best good friends since we. Y'all can at least stop while I'm talking to you. That's my time. <laughs> Give it up, everyone. Raleigh Ohmeyer. You guys need anything? He is an attorney. 